Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. So in our last video, we've had an overview of three different types of errors in Python, and we've learned that exception is one of them. So in today's video, we'll talk about how to handle Python's exception using try, except, finally, and else blocks, as handling exceptions properly is an important part for us to write a robust and error-free program. And as you guys can see in the slide here, that I've decided to have one more video for error handling, so that we can have a better understanding of error handling with different examples. So let's get into this. So let's start this video by asking what is a try and accept block. So as the name kind of explains it, try and accept block is a way to handle exceptions in Python. So the idea here is that the code that can raise an exception can be within the try block. And once the exception happened from the try block, it will go to accept block to handle the exception. So let me show you a quick example here. So I'm going to write a function here. I'm going to say def print something. And then it's going to take a list as an argument. And then in here, I'm going to actually print out one of the name in the list with a hello prefix. So hello curly braces format and then a list. And using the list indexing, I'm going to specify index of zero. And in below, let me actually call this function. So I can do print something and then pass a list as an argument. So Danny, Eddie, and Paul. So if I run this, then you can see that hello Danny gets printed out because we are actually using the list indexing and trying to print out the first index name, which is Danny here. So then now, let's try to generate an index error from this function. So if you need a recap on what index error is, please refer back to the previous video in the top right corner here. So to create an index error, I'm going to try to access the element that does not exist in this list. So index of three, for example. So I can type index of three here. And if I run this once again, then you will see an exception being thrown in the console saying index error list index are arranged. And because there was an index error here, we don't see any print message in the console because this print statement could not complete its run. So then let's think about how we can handle this exception so that we can actually display a bit more user-friendly message instead of seeing this exception here. And to do this, we can use the try and accept block. So the first step here is to put the code block inside the try statement. So since we only have one line of print statement inside this function, I'll put the try block right above this print statement. So I can just write try here with a colon and then put the print statement uh, below the try block and this try statement always needs to be followed by either accept or finally statement so in this case we're going to use the accept uh, statement here so in the below at the same line as the try i'm going to write accept colon and then i'm going to have a print statement here saying that there was an error and it was handled and you can also put more than one except block below the try block in a case when you want to handle multiple exceptions at the same time. So now we have both try and except block here. So what's going to happen now is that when I run this, Python will first try to run the code within the try block. Then an exception will be raised in this print statement, which is an index error. And once that exception is raised, it will go to the except block and print out this second print statement saying there was an error and it was handled. So if I run this, then you will see this print message coming out from this second print statement within the except block. So now we've just successfully handled an exception, which is an index error coming from this list indexing here. Okay, so now we are able to handle the exception here using try and except block. But when we look at the print statement in the except block, we are just saying that there was an error, but we are not really specifying which type of error it was. So in order for us to know what type of error this print statement was throwing, we need to work with the exception class. And this exception class is a Python's built-in class where it allows us to access the actual error object inside this except block. So then let me put the exception class right next to the except block here. So I can say except exception class, and then I want to make that as an error object. So I'm going to just specify as E. So then now this will allow us to catch almost all exceptions through this exception class. So whether it's an index error, type error, and many other exceptions, if there is an exception, it will come into this except block and we can access the error object using this exception class. And please note that this exception class does not catch base exceptions such as keyboard interrupt, system exit, generator exit, and we'll talk more about this in a more advanced error handling videos. So now we have a complete statement for the try and accept block here. Let me walk through this expression here. So when there is any exception in the try block, it will come to this except block and we've specified the exception that we want to catch 
In this case, all the exceptions other than the base exceptions that I just mentioned. And since we want to access the error object inside this except block, we've specified edge E here, meaning edge error object, so that we can access this error object inside the except block. So then now, let me try to run this, but before that, let me print out the error object, edge is. And so if I run this once again, then you will see one more print statement saying the list index of range, which is the actual content of the error that was caused in the try statement. So in this case, if you want to also see the what type of error this is, then we can also use the, the Python's REPR function. So we can do print REPR and then put the error object as the argument. And this REPR function will actually show you the printable representation of this error object. So that means that you can actually see the title of the error as well as the error content. So if I run this once again, then you will see a index error with a parenthesis with the error content saying a list index are range. And as I've explained, this exception class catches almost all exceptions except the base exception. So that means that we can try to raise different types of exceptions in this try block and those exceptions will be also handled in this except block. So let me comment this print statement here and let me manually raise a type error. Type error and then let me also comment this uh, unused print statement. And so if I run this once again, then this time you will see a type error being thrown from this print statement, but you will not see any content because we manually raise this type error using the raise keyword. Okay, so now then let's try to talk about how we can catch specific errors individually rather than trying to catch almost all exceptions using this exception class. So for this, all we have to do is to replace this exception class with a specific error class that you want to catch. So let's say that I want to catch an index error because we know that this print statement will throw an index error. So let me replace this exception class with a index error class. And if I run this once again, then you will see an index error being handled within this except block with a title and then the error content. So then this time, let's try to manually raise a different error here. So I'm gonna comment this print statement and I'm gonna raise an attribute error. So if I run this once again, then this time you will actually see the attribute error, the exception being raised in the console because we have the except block that only catches the index error, not the attribute error. So if you want to handle more than one exception within the same except block, you can either put both of the exception classes inside the parentheses right next to except statement, or we can create a separate except block for the type error specifically based on your needs below the first except block here. So let me show you both of the ways here. So the first way is to put the multiple errors in the single except block. So I'm gonna have a parenthesis here and then index error comma attribute error. So I'm basically telling this guy to catch index error and attribute error. So if I run this, then this time the attribute error was being handled in this except block. And then the second method is to have another except block below the first one. So let me first uh, delete this attribute error as well as the parenthesis. And we can just have except attribute error this time as E and then print REPR and E. And if I run this, uh, just one second, I have a typo here. So attribute error. So if I run this, then you see the attribute error being handled in the last except block that we have here. Okay, so then let's talk about the else block. So else block can be written in the same line as the try and except block here, and it allows us to execute a block of code when there was no error detected in the try block. So the code in the else block only gets executed when there was no exception from this try block here. So let me show you an example here. So in below except here, I can have an else column and then I can have a print statement here saying there was no error in the try block. And so if I run this, then you will actually see hello Danny and you will also see another print message saying there was no error in the try block. Then this time, let me actually create an exception in the try block. So I'm gonna change the index from zero to three. And if I run this once again, then this time you will see an index error being printed out and being handled in this except block and printing out the error title as well as the error content. So this else block can be useful if you want to perform some operations 
only when there was no error detected within the try block. Okay, so let's move on to the last topic of today's video, which is a finally statement. So just like the else statement that we just talked about, we can use finally statement together with the try and accept, and the code inside the finally block will always get executed regardless of whether there is an exception in the try block. So let me show you an example here. So below else, I'm gonna have another block called finally colon, and in here, I'm going to have a print statement saying this always gets run. So uh, the first scenario here is that in the try block, we have an error here because we are pointing to the index of three. So if I run this, then you will see an index error being handled in here. And you will also see another print statement coming up from the finally block saying this always gets run. So then now let's try to remove this error three to zero. And if I run this once again, and you will also see this print statement coming out from this finally block. So this finally block can be useful when you want to execute something regardless of whether there was any exceptions or not. Okay guys, that's it for this video. So in today's video, we've learned about how we can handle Python exceptions using try, accept, else, and finally blocks. In our next video, we will get into a bit more practical examples showing different scenarios of error handling. And if you found these videos helpful, please don't forget to subscribe and like my channel. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next videos.